CDK4-6 inhibitors have really changed the treatment paradigm for patients with hormone receptor positive HER2 negative metastatic breast cancer. Pavocyclin, the first one to be approved, is indicated for patients in combination with an aromatase inhibitor as initial endocrine-based therapy or with fulvestrant in patients with disease progression following endocrine therapy. We know this therapy is overall quite well tolerated and has been shown to improve progression-free survival over endocrine therapy alone. Most recently at ASCO 2021, we heard about extended six-year follow-up on the PLOMA-3 trial, which evaluated fulvestrant plus palvo uh, versus uh, uh, fulvestrant plus uh, placebo. The median OS of 35 months with palvo versus 28 months in the placebo arm is, of course, clinically meaningful and was seen irrespective of mutations in prior therapy. Pre-existing conditions are quite common in cancer patients, particularly for those that are older. The conditions that we see are the ones that we see commonly even in patients without cancer and can include gastrointestinal disorders, musculoskeletal, metabolic, and vascular uh, and cardiac disorders. Yes, we did a post hoc analysis of the Paloma 2 trial where we evaluated the efficacy and safety of palvocyclib in patients with hormone receptor positive HER2 negative advanced breast cancer who had pre existing conditions. These were categorized by MEDRA, which is a system that's widely used by regulatory authorities and many clinical cohorts to classify comorbidities and adverse events. This analysis was important because we know that pre-existing conditions are common in cancer patients as they age, as we've just mentioned. Patients with multiple comorbidities have been shown to have worse survival rates and higher rates of complications. And when a patient with multiple comorbidities is diagnosed with cancer, there are sometimes challenges in managing toxicities and physicians are sometimes even more hesitant to offer patients treatments. As we identify new treatments in breast cancer, it's important to understand the effect of pre-existing conditions on the efficacy and safety of these therapies so that physicians can understand what to expect and how to manage any issues which may arise. While patients were grouped by MEDRA pre-existing categories, uh, uh, conditions including gastrointestinal, uh, musculoskeletal, metabolic and vascular and cardiac. Median progression-free survival was estimated and treatment adverse events were compared between treatment groups uh, within each pre-existing uh, condition subgroup. In this analysis, not surprisingly, we found that patients were reflective of, uh, of real-world conditions in terms of um, the, their comorbid conditions. About 40% had baseline pre-existing GI disorders, 59% uh, pre-existing musculoskeletal disorders, almost 40% metabolic disorders, and more than 50% actually had vascular and cardiac disorders. But what's important is uh, that regardless of the baseline condition, palvocyclib plus letrozole prolonged progression-free survival compared with placebo plus letrozole. And most importantly, treatment adverse events were similar across condition subgroups. Well, certainly these types of analyses are not meant to replace an individual assessment by a patient and their physician about what's best for them and what they can handle. In oncology, we tend to have very long relationships with patients and we get a sense of what they can and can't tolerate. However, I think these analyses are important because they give us some insight into the fact that sometimes our gut instincts about who can and can't tolerate a treatment may not be entirely accurate. So we hope that this analysis will help in the clinical decision making and again highlight the efficacy of this important agent even in patients with pre-existing conditions. Mm -hmm.